Valeria Sinaí Flores, del canal de las Travisucas, soy la presidenta de National Junior Honor Society. Y para empezar el capítulo de National Junior Honor Society, hablaremos con el alcalde sobre problemas en nuestra comunidad de Dickinson para arreglarlos. Bueno, ¡vamos! Yes, it is. If you go down this way and turn left and just go down the hallway a little bit, it'll be on your left. No, I'm pretty good. You guys want something to drink? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I'm glad y'all are here and uh, I was excited to get your email and everything about your project and uh, here to help however I can. So, yeah, the floor is yours. Like, what? Uh, so I'll help okay. about to start okay. with, historically we've never, um, I've been a co-sponsor of the National Junior Art Society for eight years, okay. and every time we did a community project, it seemed to stay inside the school. Okay. And so I came to them um, after they were elected and talked to them about maybe expanding that into right. doing something outside, and so that's when Valeria wrote you the letter, okay. and Very just cool. to see what the different... Um, issues or problems or ways we can improve the city okay. so that we could involve our whole chapter. We have 60 participants. Gotcha. So we okay. have, a, this is the biggest chapter we've had since McAdams split into two schools and okay. we got cramps. So this has been our largest group of students. Okay. And so they just said that that was a really good idea. And so she wrote the letter and just kind of took off with it. Cool. So are y'all looking to do, is your project about, like you want to know about issues facing the city? Or is it more oriented like y'all are wanting to do something in the city from like a public service standpoint? Or is it both? Or what are y'all, what, what kind of is your you focus? Guys. Yeah, what kind of is your focus? Um, Wouldn't it be easier to do it in the city because we're also balancing our schoolwork and our, if we have house chores, so wouldn't it be easier to do it in the city? Sure, I guess my question was more as in, do you, is, part, is your project like you want to learn about issues that the city has, or are you wanting to do something to better the community, better the community itself, or one or the other? Do something to better the community. Okay, yeah. so you're looking for like opportunities to do something. Okay, I kind of turn this around a little bit on you. So y'all live here in the city, and y'all see things and, and drive around. What do you think some of the issues are? Because frankly, when I I can tell you what I think issues are, but I hear those from people. It is, and I observe it myself, but a lot of you hear is from people. Um, so what do you, you know, y'all drive around, you see things like, what do you think issues are? What, what would you say? Homeless people. And okay. The, the graffiti on the streets. Okay. And then the walls. Yeah. So, so like mm -hmm. vandalism and invading property? Or yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. And I hear about that. Yeah. Do y'all sure. have anything that you see when you're driving from school to grocery stores? I mean, not not all the time, but sometimes I see like trash. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Yep. Yeah. You hear about that as well? I know the um, athletics department, the girls' athletics department, does a trash we do a trash pickup, trash, a trash, trash bash or trash yeah. pickup. There's a big day we do once a year usually. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to just be one day, but there is. That's kind of the big day that everybody does when everybody goes out and does all that. I feel like it's in the spring. Or yes. Night. Yes. And I feel like it's only on Hughes. Or do they do? Eh, they kind of clean up the bayou. It's a little more than that. But okay. they I think they usually meet around the boat ramp. Or okay. Or near Paul Hopkins, but. Um, but they do do that. But again, that isn't something you have to wait till the you know spring right. to do. Of no, no, no. Um, is there anything like beyond like an aesthetic? So not just how the city looks, but are there like issues that you see. Because like when you mentioned homelessness, that is an issue that you see. But I don't know that the issue of homelessness is so much. Ugh, I have to look at homeless people, right? It's the idea that there are homeless people, right? And that that's a problem in and of itself. Though some people see it more as a, as a, as a I don't want to see it problem. Um, 
But is there anything like just kind of community issues maybe that you see to an extent with anything? Um, whether it's like a crime kind of issue or something or... Okay, so I have got a thought for the homeless. Okay. That's more like an economic problem because they don't really have like the mm -hmm. money to have a, their own home or job. Yeah. So the thing is, why not give them like educational opportunities? You know, there's like universities and colleges they mm -hmm. can go to, so why not like... At school in the Avid, we have projects like to mm -hmm. spread awareness of colleges. Why don't Why don't we also do the same thing here, like spread awareness of colleges for people who need education? That could be one way to go. Um, I do know if you kind of look at homelessness, um, we have some groups in town that do things. And if you're looking for public service, that's a good way. Mi Lewis is one is very big here. Does a lot with homelessness, and particularly right now, um, they are really overtaxed because. Uh, Inflation and things have been such a problem that they have really depleted a lot of their resources, uh, food, uh, pantry, and things like that. I'm told is not, you know, it's, it's they've been a lot better. So we can do a food drive. That, that's always they're already welcome. open. The food drive. So we um, already doing it. Okay. They're already open. Well, MI the stuff the bus. Okay. Project goes to the Mi Lewis. Uh, is it a foundation or what do they call it? Yeah, it's it? a nonprofit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so all of the things that are collected and money that is donated okay. goes. To to the food pantry, oh, I see. Okay. and we get to be over that this year. Well, that's, so that's great. Yeah. That's, really good. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, because I know they really, really need it. So I'd also encourage you. They meet. It's not every Saturday, but maybe it is every Saturday. I think they meet um, pretty early out by uh, out, out uh, back behind the church out on uh, on five seventeen. Where is it? Uh, is it the Methodist Church? No, it's uh, it's the other side. So it's the I'm just saying maybe it's the Presbyterian Church. Um, but they meet out behind that church. We could get the details for you. But they meet out behind there, and they do pick up and stuff in the morning, and they need help, like, doing distribution and stuff. Okay. So that could be something maybe you could do as, like, a little extra if you're already doing things with my Lewis. I know they always need okay. people to do that. You don't need – you just have to be able to lift stuff. It's not, it's not every okay. technical job, so uh, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so that, that could definitely be an element. I mean, as far as wanting to do something else for homelessness, you know, there's always um, – there's always things to think about. Um, I don't have a clear solution for you at the moment, um, but it could be a, a maybe education thing, or in some cases, it's not even about education. It's about there might be like deeper issues, like mental issues, things like that that people have. Like we can help, or we can with the education, we can help the kids in school who don't have enough money to stay in the education. So we can do like money drives for them to stay in school, to have an education. Like You're talking like scholarship like kind of things or something. Like a scholarship kind of deal or a stipend or something like that. I mean, I think that that, that could be something there as well. Um, are there any like others? We're talking about homelessness a little bit. Are there any other things that, like y'all are kind of experienced? Like that maybe you have friends or something that they're going through something or dealing with something in the city. I don't know that friends go through this, but uh -huh. uh, I noticed that after Harvey, the depletion in the um, what do you guys call it? That's not the holidays or the park. What is it called? The Festival of Lights. Uh -huh. The Festival of Lights. And then it did get back up and running, yes. but is it back up to par of where it was? Pretty prior? much. Pretty much. I mean, that is always, they always do need people to help set up. They actually start setting up now. I saw a deal that they are, October 1, they start setting up. Because it takes them about a month to six weeks, I think, to get, get going. So that is another possibility. They do always something about bringing the community together. Mm -hmm. Something like an event that brings the community together, and, and I know that that festival. Yeah, every, is everybody loves them. that for sure. Um, and yeah, they actually they were fine to do it. It had nothing to do with the, the hurricane so much because they did it after the hurricane. It was that the county was putting in the new bridge because FEMA would not let us use that bridge again, so we had to put in a new one. So uh -huh. and there was too much construction that delayed. And then they were going to do it the next year, and then COVID happened. And then they couldn't do it that year. So it was two years, and then finally they did it last year um, after a while. So um, but it went pretty well. It was very popular last year. Um, and something else I was going to maybe think about. Um, you know, one issue you talk about things people don't talk about. So we have this beautiful bayou in town, right? Mm -hmm. um, the water quality is abysmal. Uh, it's full of coliform bacteria. Um, <laughs> I we had uh, some people from Texas A and M AgriLife that came out and spoke, and they and they were talking about I wouldn't eat out of that uh, deal. I think there's actually a guideline that says don't eat out of the bayou more than like once a week or something due to the stuff. And I told that to someone, and they said, well, just once a week. 
because I live in the Bible, I guess the official, I was like, hey, that's just what they said, that's what science said, but something I think about uh, water quality awareness is good, because the Bible is living, but it is not like a body of water you would want to swim in. Yeah, like, it's like yeah. a dirty, yeah. a trash pickup by the beach. Mm -hmm. When even trash, I'm even thinking beyond that, that you talk about like awareness about the things that go into the water. Exactly, right. because you have a lot of it um, is uh, fertilizer use, other things, pet runoff, so runoff stuff like that. that. And, and, and it all goes in there. <laughs> it's okay, you've just, just been talking about this. Okay. We did. Our area too, but others, yeah. But people don't know that. So they don't they know do that not. that runoff causes, what is it called? Tug? Dead zone. Dead zone. Dead zone. Yep. Because of the amount of algae that grows. Mm -hmm. So people don't know that, and that's what he's saying, that's right. but it really affects the body right now. Yep. And, the, and it, it's not like this is unique to Dickinson, but it is It is problematic. It's problematic in uh, the area. Yes, it is. Yes, and it people is. aren't aware of that, like you're saying, the guy that just fishes and eats whatever he wants. I know. I was know. like, whoa, I think they say it only once a week, <laughs> right? Because there's, there's just stuff in there that... Um, we had someone that said, they go, I swim in that water. And the, the scientist from A&M AgriLife was like, I would not do that. She was like, no. I wonder if there's do. something that they could do to get awareness mm -hmm. about what's happening with, with the water quality. Did A&M give any suggestions of what to do that would help the quality of water? Oh, sure. And in fact, <laughs> let me look at my calendar. If y'all are inclined on... It's just funny, I was looking at my calendar for the month, like, all right, what do I got to do this month, right? On Saturday, October 15th at 9.30 a.m. here in the council chambers, there's a storm drain stewards workshop where A&M does a deal and they talk about um, uh, storm drains and whatnot. No red that video. It is 9.30 on Saturday, October 15th. Okay. It is right here at City Hall. Okay. Hmm? It's okay. If you can't make it, it's okay. We're just writing down ideas. But, it, but even if not everybody can make it, it could right. give you, they uh -huh. can give you a lot better information and on what to do to, yes, than what I'm going to be able to just recall. That's to help with the storm drains? Yeah, because, every, you know, that's slightly a different issue, but related. They're talking about when you cook with grease or something, you know, you pour it down your drain, drain right? right? Or some people take outside, they pour it in the storm drain in front of the house. Because you put in your own pipes, it could clog up, so they just dump it out. This is kind of what we talked about. Everything that when it rains, it's going to run off into that storm drain. That storm drain runs off and dead zone. Yeah. There's, there's even there. things like picking them up to your pets. I was surprised to learn that um, pet <laughs> droppings, like you know, just poop from animals, even the urine, that can be an issue. But more so the solid waste, right? That it, yeah, it all washes in there. Yeah. <laughs> the, do what? We talk about that with Yellowstone. Yeah. How the mm -hmm. the animals that go in the water affected the, 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 the whole of the dirtiness yeah. into the river. A lot of it's the use of phosphates uh, mm -hmm. in fertilizers and such. That's a big a cause of it. But there's all kinds of stuff that goes in there. And maybe awareness, would that, I think that would be a great idea if you did something like that. Okay. And like you say, it's not something people often talk about. You're right. Um, I would not have guessed that because a lot of people actually move onto the bayou so they can have that prime fishing <laughs> Probably catch and release, <laughs> catch and release. Uh, like I said, I would not. Uh, we had one person got upset at a meeting. They were like, "This is a living bayou," and it's like, "Well, it's not that it isn't living, but it has some issues." Right. It has issues. So, um, have any other issues been presented to you just from people that come? Um, we get a lot of stuff. I mean, some of the stuff I don't think y'all are going to deal with as a public service kind of thing. Uh, right. You know, roads, things like that. Um, I would say. Um, you know, from like economic development perspectives, what we what we did find when we started doing a comprehensive plan. So we we basically have a big plan, and we bring in different people from the city and other people. We have a company help us, and we ask questions like, okay, what does the plan for the city need to be over like a twenty year period? And one of the things that came up early was we had like no youth involvement. So we did over at the high school. There's a a, a group that started like a youth action committee, and they actually meet right in this room um, once a month. And the president of that is on that committee, and we asked them about needs, uh, like they brought up. We were talking about what do young people want, and we looked around the room and said, we don't have a single young person in this room, right? And we're, we're like, what do young people want? Um, and so we brought in some young people to talk, and um, just from a planning standpoint. I don't really know where to go with that, with, with y'all so much, right. but, uh, but that, that's a perspective, sometimes is getting perspective of young people, like what do y'all want? Um, park space is a big thing. People want that. That's something we're working on. They have actually city-owned parks. The current parks in town, the city does not operate. They're the county's parks. We will. We are working to take those over from the county 
and that will probably happen because the county just saves money by giving them to us so they'll probably do it but there then a question does become maybe once we get more parks and rec going in the city maybe like what do people want and that's primarily targeted at young people and families mm -hmm. and so that would be an area input would be good um another good possibility i'm just kind of spitballing here okay. uh the animal shelter is in place mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. had the the first annual bow wow meow luau on uh oh, wow. on, <laughs> on, i got there right on saturday and they did it was a hawaiian theme and they had fire dancers we, and stuff we can totally help with that because a lot of people our age especially and younger uh -huh. love animals yeah. to be with and we can also and uh miss grimes had just had her dog had baby <laughs> babies and she had brought them to our school oh cool so now that you're saying that is actually i'd like to put her idea and your idea together with bringing dogs mm -hmm. to libraries and schools to help with adoption and even just like fundraising i'm, I'm sure they'd love yeah. to do something like that our, our the new shelter director we hired he actually used to run the new york city animal shelter and the los angeles animal shelter and did some stuff uh, so he's has a lot of um, a lot of background in that, a real, real professional background, more than I would have thought we would get here in Dickinson. Um, like Michael Bloomberg, like recruited him or something to be in New York to be the animal shelter director and stuff. So um, he's he's doing a lot of stuff here to really kind of reform our, our shelter. And I know they always need help. Um, that's always an area. There's always going to sure be stray they, animals. I'm sure they need donations, maybe for like food, hundred percent, and towels and things like that. The kids actually have an account with a very large fund in it and we've since these community projects have never gone much further mm -hmm. than the school walls they're allowed to vote and spend their money on what they want to spend their money on so they can base it around I the see. project and then be able to donate or be able to give whatever that's great and there are big ticket items they need like when they built the shelter uh, it has a hookup for a big industrial gas dryer but they have just a regular dryer and they have to do a lot of laundry there for lens oh, sure. and stuff. Oh, sure. And so, and it, it's just not the right kind of equipment and they need it, but it's very expensive. In the animal shelter from the, so I'll get kind of explain how the animal shelter works. Most of the cities in Galveston County, the, the county administers animal services and, and they do a good enough job, but the problem can become, often the complaint we hear is the county shelter is often very uh, full. It's, it's hard to get people out and all of this. So Dickinson, as we do our own shelter, um, within the city itself and so the city actually provides that service instead of just paying the county some money to do it that does create a budget issue and we and we used to not really track the finance as well of the animal shelter but we've done that better and it cost a lot of money and it was just kind of getting supplemented in ways that people weren't aware of and so we are kind of big grips with the budget and we definitely have determined we need to ramp up the nonprofit annual um, contribution to keep it in line with our budget or it's gonna like explode we might end up having to use the county someday, which we don't really want to do if the budget just became outrageous. And what's the name of the shelter for the city? Bayou Animal Services. Bayou Animal Services. And there's a nonprofit that's kind of tethered to it called BFF, Bayou Friends Forever. Um, <laughs> they just started up. Uh, if you go to the city's Facebook page, there's a lot of posts that we just made about the event that we did on Saturday. Um, so, you know, check it out. I wish if we'd met like a week sooner or something, I would have definitely <laughs> steered you all that way. They serve spam, like spam sushi. They, that's actually traditional in the islands. In World War II, a lot of Pacific Islands started eating spam because all the soldiers brought it with them. Because it was cheap meat, it's just this, it's like the parts you don't use for meat, right? So they put it in spam and they actually kind of like it. It became a cultural thing and it tastes like fish stuff. It tastes like sushi, not spam, it was amazing. But, uh, anyway, um, but I mean, animal shelters are great cause okay. as well. Uh, to look at, we always need help over there. Even just even raising money, but even just like volunteering, doing things at the shelter. Yeah. What um, about your senior citizens? Do they always kind of get pushed right. aside, like holidays, things like that? Right. Is there anything that they could possibly mm -hmm. help with them? You know, the city itself doesn't necessarily work with that cohort like exclusively. We don't really have a area of the city that, that does that. It's not to say that there isn't a need it's not one that i'm immediately like familiar with or able to we give even you have like, a any lead. local nursing homes i know there's in, in lake the city. city i know there's one in lake city but it's like on the border but i, I don't think, that's think we do in the city limits yeah there's one place i'm thinking maybe is but i don't think it is yeah i think that would be the problem i don't think you know if there was like you know around holidays there's some senior citizens who don't yeah. get meals and things like yeah. that there is 
anything around it. That isn't something like that meal just, deliveries that, and things like that. That would I probably that's like an M.I. Lewis question. Mm -hmm. okay. They might more know more about that than I would, um, but that isn't something that comes up. They might be able to point us in the direction. Yeah, occasionally I might get an individual question. Someone saying like this person needs help with something and I might get in touch with a group like M.I. Lewis and try to ameliorate it, but the city at large doesn't necessarily do that. Okay. Okay. What about community gardens? So actually, we are, uh, we haven't done it yet, but we are going to have a community garden right out here by City Hall and by the back lot. There's a lot um, next to the parking lot and next to the little commercial strip behind City Hall. And um, we are going to have a community garden going up there at some point. Council is approved to allow it. There's a gentleman in town who sort of, I don't know that we contracted with him, that's not the right word. We just sort of declared that Mr. Brown is going to help do this, but I'm, there could be a possibility with that as well, sure. What about like, uh, so it's, uh, when she said nursing home, it got me thinking of mm -hmm. us helping, being able to help in hospitals with uh, sick people mm -hmm. and getting them gifts and helping even volunteering to right. help the nurses. So we don't really have any hospitals in the city like mm -hmm. that. Um, we have some doctor's offices, but uh, that would be something, that'd be outside the city if you wanted to do that. Um, but that isn't something we have here per se. It doesn't necessarily have to be like hospitals. It could be just like a the doctor room. offices, like you said. Yeah. I mean, you could always go to a doctor's office and just ask if uh, there's some privacy issues. I don't know how they'd handle it, but um, if there was a need for that, that'd be my best advice is maybe to look up some of the local doctors and ask if they have any need like that. Are we still doing the trash bash for like student council group on issues? So we talked about that earlier. I think mm -hmm. that's the through athletics. I think that they, they do it every year. Yeah, I was like saying that, that you're mm -hmm. talking that uh, the city does one. Coach yeah. Minotti does. Hey, I think Coach, uh, maybe that's why I'm thinking Hughes. Maybe Coach Minotti signs up to take right. Hughes and other people take other. Yeah, I don't think it's just Hughes, but right. um, yeah, I, I hope it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Hughes for us because we're closest. Okay. Like Adam sits on Hughes, so I assume that she probably says, hey, we'll do Hughes, and she takes the girls and the boys down that way. I see. Okay. I think. I, we had this come up. I don't know, again, when I was talking about like your friends or yourselves or anybody. Does anybody live in like an apartment complex in town where maybe the conditions aren't great, like there's problems? Um, I know right after, right after Harvey, when we did home, when visits. We did home visits, but I don't know if... The conditions have improved since. And I bring that up because Creekside Apartments at 406 Deets, um, we're actually in the process of condemning the entire property, most likely. Uh, we did a partial condemnation last Monday, and the rest of the buildings, they have 60 days to bring them off the code. I don't know if they're going to be able to do that, so there's a, I'd say there's a good likelihood we may end up condemning the entire property. And it has kind of brought to our mind an issue of, you know, our apartments, are they up to, are they like sanitary or people living in squalor because the the stuff that was presented at the public meeting on Monday, I mean, one of the commission members like cried and they were showing these pictures of how it was, people are breathing in mold. And oh my gosh. Just really horrific, right? And so it kind of raises the issue of, um, do, you talk about public awareness, right? A lot of people, they live like that for a long, 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 long time, right? They don't have another option. And they don't have another option, but also stuff doesn't get reported. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so part of it is how do we as the city find out about this stuff? We are probably going to put in something where we do some inspections more regularly, but mm -hmm. in the meantime, helping people deal with that situation, because at Creekside, for instance, the problem is going to be, um, so let's say the whole property does get condemned, all right? Well, the city I think we're, might pay a month's rent or something, but at the end of the day, that defines where most to live. Well, what if the apartment doesn't let you out of your lease, right? Well, the city, that's not the city's fight. The city just closes the apartment. All we do is say it's not sanitary. But do people have education about where to get like free legal services? Because they probably would need to sue the management property, right? Like what their actual rights are as consumers in the state. And a lot of people don't know that. And what we're finding is we're telling residents like, yeah, this property might get condemned. We're getting questions like, oh my God, what if I can't get on my lease and all this? And we're like, well, we can't give you legal advice, but these people could. And so maybe something about like your rights as renters or things like that, that's mm -hmm. an issue that's been up recently. <laughs> like, let's just, um, that kind of comes to mind just because of what we're dealing with. Okay. Um, but also just the issue of knowing about problems like that with renting. I wonder if there's any students that live there. Maybe we probably are. Something yeah. about your friends We've had murders them. over there, all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, oh, um, oh my wow. friend, I don't know what apartment she's staying in, but I know it's somewhere near the high school. And I know it's not like the best apartment, like mm -hmm. the inside or something. 
So maybe something about awareness about like what, speaking up about yeah, speaking up, what does the law say? How do we get engaged in that? And things like that. Um, that you're not supposed to live in conditions because they were probably living in these conditions since Harvey. So probably like five years they were living in really horrific exposed transformer boxes. Yeah. They were just painting over mold, like when it came up, stuff like that. I mean, sewage leaking out of the ground. So what, do you, what does the city do with the property when they own the property? What's the city well, we property? don't own the property. So well, once they condemn the property. So, we can, so that means it's torn down. So we basically say you have to, so we the, we condemn it. We give them 60 days to abate it, which means to fix it. They, I don't know that they'll be able to. Right. So then we tear it down. So at that point, okay. the property owner has to decide what they're going to do with it. Um, okay. Obviously, we'd like them to do something more constructive with it if it goes that route. But no, the city, uh, you're the second person today to ask me about that. And they all assume, well, the city owns it after that, doesn't it? <laughs> we do not own it after that. We just say you have to tear it down, what's on the land. How do they not let you out of your lease if there's no physical building for you? Because you're still, you signed a contract. But there's no, there's Well, there's they might be, there. it, it might be an issue where they're supposed to let you out of your lease. But what do you do if you're an indigent person who yeah. doesn't know? And they're like, well, we don't have to let you out of your lease. And they just keep paying. They Can we help and with then that? you need a lawyer to tell you like, no, sir, no, ma'am. They can't do this to you. So that's where you get, because a lot of people. They could look and see there might like, be like apartment complexes that are in like, our area. Can we help mm -hmm. with that? Like since they can't have, if they can't have an apartment to live in, we can rent our homes to them. Like, I don't know. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Or, you like, might need to consult. <laughs> or like, These or poor people have been picked out of the creek side. Can they live or help them go to a different apartment? Because I live in a subdivision, me and her, mm -hmm. where there's literally new apartments right next to us. Like, they just built brand mm -hmm. new apartments. So if they get kicked out of their old ones, we can help them find new apartments to move into. Well, I will say that is an issue. So M.I. Lewis is trying to help some, but I think they said that there are only seven, like, rent-controlled apartments. And I mean, like, units available in the county. Yeah, like right now. So they'll probably have to move out of the county, right. which could be okay, but it depends, like, where do you work? Again, what's your mode of transportation? If you're living in an apartment like this, you're probably not particularly well off, right? Yeah, so it starts to put a burden on you. It's expensive. It, it is. So, so now you have to drive longer, and I'm not sure what y'all do with that, but I'm just kind of throwing <laughs> it out to you, and, and maybe maybe it's a thing I don't to think know that about. we can move the people in our homes, but we could definitely spread awareness for information on things that they have right there thing right yeah Let's get information because that's because that will help them to some degree if the, they get damages from the apartment from the management company or whoever or if they let them out of the lease um so yeah but i'm interested if we have any students who we mm -hmm. probably currently it's something to think there. about. It is something to think about. Yeah, we might need to reach out. In about 60 yeah. days, we'll kind of know more with what's going to happen with... Because the buildings they're condemning now are already vacant, basically. So the, the ones that they have yet to condemn are on a 60-day clock. Um, we can totally like use uh, the intercom or counselors. Since they don't want to reach out and say it directly, they can say it um, anonymously. So... Cause a lot of kids are not really sure because they might not have there's enough a, money. There's a process as well. Well, and I would say that would be of some use to the city because, so we put up notices over there and we're pretty sure they took the notices down, the apartment mm -hmm. <laughs> people, so that some people were like, I didn't even know this was happening. But we've had people, code people walking around for months, right. basically checking out the property mm -hmm. and posting notices. So I would actually say that would be helpful it may be the school district at large for your part if you did say something i don't know how you distribute it but if they said or you just look through records do you live at creekside apartments so I it might know. behoove them to get in touch with the city because then we can say here's legal aid right here's the yeah. and that's an organization here's the stuff for legal aid here's other resources there's a process once the student is homeless already mm -hmm. whether it be not whether it be living um, with somebody else if the student doesn't have an address for their parent themselves of the way that some things are coded and our counselors are aware at school, mm -hmm. it's just the process, like you're saying, there's a process they go through, but yeah. I'm sure that they can pull addresses based on just a certain section mm -hmm. and be able to develop a list of who would potentially become what was that, that would that be, sense? For, yes, that um, would be at risk. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because I would say probably the time is now to start looking for somewhere else to live before the actual condemnation comes in. Because once we do that, they'll get X amount of time to leave 
as I understand it. So, so that would be helpful. And that's kind of a very immediate, excuse right. me, a very immediate concern. And that could really kind of, that could be a district wide thing. You could maybe try to talk to people about doing. Because okay. it wouldn't just be your school. It would be high school, pre-fed school. It would be school. anybody who goes. It could be anybody. Yeah. So there could be people living there as well. Um, so I kind of hope not, but probably are. Okay. It's not a great place. Right. Do you guys have anything to add? <laughs> you two are very excited. <laughs> no? So I was going to say about the funds. You know, like yeah. there's like ads or like little boxes where you can fund money. Depending on where they are at, people, certain people have like their eyesight, the mm -hmm. way that they see things, they see it differently. So maybe like the places, like their place, they could be changed to spread more awareness to the community. What, what do you What do you mean exactly? That? So, like my like our teachers say, either okay. like either you like reading or hearing the teachers. So like, oh, okay. Uh -huh. I mean, you like seeing your te see reading with listening to the teachers. Sorry, I'm getting. So it's kind of the idea that you do a better job. Some people learn like visually. Some people learn yeah. by listening. Okay. Like their way of learning, their gotcha. way of seeing the ads. A learning style. Gotcha. Could we like change some things like the ways that they see them so they can spread more awareness. So do you mean spreading awareness through like different like forms? Yeah, like yeah, because she's saying, so some people when they just read it, they just think because you need money and not because you're trying to actually help the organism. So maybe change oh, instead of just putting flyers up, doing it a different way? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. purpose. Because a lot of times they just put flyers up and like you said, people go around and take them down. Yeah. <laughs> if they just take them down, so then maybe people don't have the awareness. So maybe a different way of presenting information. Okay, that's yeah. just she's talking about. So we don't, we probably don't have enough money, but like an example is an ad to put on a, a television, but the way we probably can do it is going in the sidewalks with posters and actually telling them face to face, this is for helping kids in need or people in need that need more money or just I think help. social yeah. media is a really good I uh, have a way media. to spread awareness just because it's, a, it's an easy. Uh -huh monetary value it's, it's very inexpensive or but we could do what you there's so about. many people who just well, that's true mm -hmm. so please don't go down to creek side with signs no, it ain't not. safe down here please no, god no we're not going to creek nobody wants that do not we're not going to creek no like the mayor sent us down to creek side with signs no we do not we do not if y'all want to go down the bayou route yeah. of helping to promote mm -hmm. awareness for cleaning it up y'all could make you know some type of like video ad and we could post it mm -hmm. to our 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 social media and that cool. would be something that wouldn't cost y'all you know i mean if y'all like did, yeah, we, like we could show things, help, uh, we could show us helping picking up trash and we can post it on social remember, media remember it's more than just trash too so the, the really river the idea. dead zones mm -hmm. the fundraising we could do the whole thing y'all could create post an it. entire video type thing and i'm sure that we could post it on different social mm -hmm. media outlets for y'all That'd be great. I mean, I, that would really be some use. Um, and then Mr. Chaffney can help them make it create. I was going to say, uh, Jenna, what is her last name? Simpson? Yeah, she's, Simpson. she's on Council Simpson. Yeah, I'm like, what is Well, Sam we have one who's Simpson with a P, and then she's Simpson with, with S-I-M-S-E-N. Yeah. And, and then they sit by each other, so I'm always like, good thing she's a woman, because I'm like, Councilman Simpson. Councilwoman Simpson. <laughs> so that way we keep them apart. But. I'm sure she could come down and get something together. Oh, I'm recreate sure. Recreate that. That could be posted. I'm that sure she would. With spread awareness, mm -hmm. too. She's really good at that. Yeah, again, if you can, if anyone can, that stormwater thing. It's not the most riveting thing in the world, I'll be honest with you. But when and I've seen like three of them, so I probably won't be there myself, but uh, it, it is good though. When people live on the bayou, like that's something they need mm -hmm. to know about, you mm -hmm. know? And it's something that, it, what is it, red, white, and blue on the bayou? Like all these different things, these events. That yeah, happen, we did the red, white, bayou recently. Yeah, yeah. Like that they need to know about. I think it's important. And it really is a good asset for our community, and we're trying to do some economic development that kind of highlights it or has it as really a central focus because we can really make it nice and there could be cool things to do like right on the water and to be out here and to really attract people and spend some money in town and let us really make this a nice place. Right. And so it would be horrible to have this, you know, but it's like, you know, toxic water, right? Nobody wants that. You know, it's beautiful, but don't touch it. <laughs> so we, we, it would, that would be, that'd be really good. Yep. On that. Okay. The we'll the After they meet as a whole group, because uh -huh. of course I said there's like 60 of them. So yeah. they're going to take this information back to the 60. Okay. They're going to pick a project together since it's, it's supposed to be student-led. So we're going to let them kind of mm -hmm. kind of get a feel with all of their fellow um, 
members to see what they want to do, then I'll reach back out to them. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what they decide and kind of keep you informed. Hopefully it'll be like a year long project, so they'll work on it okay. continuously and see where we get from start to finish. Okay, cool. And well, create a goal. What well, I'll do since y'all here, I'll give you each of your cards. If you ever have an okay. issue or anything, feel free to to reach out here. I'm not sure. Here, just take some. Pass it down. <laughs> and we appreciate your time yeah. and everything to get to know and get to help the city. This stuff's kind of fun to do. So. <laughs> No. Well, there anything else? Why any questions or anything? Or? I think they were more nervous than anything. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> right. that's no problem. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Are y'all good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We good? All right. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome. We I'll be happy to walk y'all. Walk y'all out. Oh God.